I believe I have the distinction of being the only non-South African past or present uh, in this conversation. My relationship with Rav Tanzer actually, Rav Tanzer Zatzal, actually is a, an inherited relationship. My wife Malka's first husband, as you all know, Rav Yehuda Mandelberg Zal, was one of the early Talmidim of Rabbi Tanzer. And um, in fact, Rabbi Tanzer was their Shadchan. And Malka spent many years teaching together with Marsha at Yeshiva College. But of course, anybody in the rabbinic or yeshiva community certainly heard of Rabbi Tanzer in the second half of the 20th century. He was a legend, and I had certainly heard about him. But when I started coming to South Africa 11 years ago to visit the family, I really, at that stage in my life, I was not looking to make new friends, but Malka insisted that the first person I have to meet is Rabbi Tanzer. And I have to tell you that that meeting, which lasted much longer than I expected, was the beginning of a very endearing and enduring friendship between myself and Malka and Marsha and the rabbi. So maybe the, the comments, the few comments of an outsider they say in Yiddish, a the gust of Haval, Zeit of Amal, the objective view of the outsider. Maybe I can add one or two points to what people are thinking and what has already been said. Sometime before the turn of the 20th century, there was a, a, new, a famous newspaper, the famous newspaper in the Jewish world, which came out of Warsaw, was called Hatsafira. It was actually a Haskalah newspaper. And the editor of Hatzvira decided that he wanted to interview four rabbis to ask them what they consider to be the key responsibility of a, rov, of a rabbi. Fascinating article. He was not himself a, a Dati person. And he interviewed four giants. So first he went to Rav Rafael Shapiro, who was the Volozhin of Rosh Hashiv, and he asked him what is the most important thing that a rabbi should do, and he said, Rosh Hashiva said, learning, learning, Limura Torah. And then he went to Rav Yitzhak Blazer, one of the three great students of Rav Yisrael Salanter, one of the great Balei Musar. And he said, Rav Yitzhak Blazer, Rav Yitzhak Petterberger said, Musar, the Rav has to give Musar to his people. And then he went to the interview the Or HaShulchan, Rav Yechiel Michal Epstein, and he said he was the great posik of, of uh, one of the great poskim of Lithuania, of Lita, and he said, Halacha, a rov has to be a Baal Halacha, he has to paskin Shilas. And the fourth rabbi that he went to was Rav Chaim Soloveitchik, Rav Chaim Brisker. So he went to Rav Chaim Brisker and he asked him, what is the most important job of a rabbi? And Rav Chaim said, in true Rav Chaim form, what did the other three say? So he told them. So he said, well, he said, uh, learning, learning, learning Torah, of course. Everybody has to learn Torah. Mitzvah of Talmud Torah, Kineged Kulam, we all have to study Torah. Musr, giving Musr, giving drushes, encouraging people to live a firmer lifestyle, to improve the quality of their mitzvahs. A whole sugi and Gemara Echen. Everybody has to do that. Halacha. Everybody has to know how to paskan a shayla, shmaitza to live according to halacha. But a rov, a rabbi, surely has to do all three of these things. But what's unique about the role of a rabbi is that he has to care about the needs of every one of his people. He has to be with his people. That is the unique function of a rov. Rabbi Tanzer was clearly, without a doubt, a London, a Talmud Chacham, a product of the great Telza Yeshiva in Cleveland. And he was a great Balmusser, a legendary orator, wonderful speaker, motivational speaker, before the term was invented in the end of the 20th century. And Halacha, he guided 
the community of South Africa, of Johannesburg, and, and the country of South Africa with a fealty to the Shulchan Aruch and to Halacha. But the greatness of Rabbi Tanzer's Rabbonus, his rabbinate, which made him the rabbi, was that he understood that sometimes a rov has to close the Gemara in order to be a rabbi. That a rabbi has to ultimately care for the needs of his people, of the balabatim, of the men and the women of the children. Rav Tanzer was really the poster child of Rav Chaim Soloveitchik's definition of a rabbi. And that was his greatness. And I had the opportunity of, to observe him. He was, he, the love that was engendered towards Reb Tanzer by men, women, children, little children. I would, I would see little children come up to him on Shabbos, not, not afraid of him, but in his later years, but hugging him and wishing him a good Shabbos. I, I was actually astounded by his photographic memory. People would speak to him, have a conversation with him, say good Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom. He remembered their bar mitzvah parsha. He remembered when they got married. He remembered all of their passage, life passage and life-changing events. He was the rabbi. How many widows and widowers and people who were infirm, how many phone calls he made every single air of Shabbos to strengthen the lonely Jews of South Africa, the lonely and almost forgotten Jews by so many people. Avram Avinu, his namesake, developed the big tent, the open tent theory. We're all familiar this week's Parsha. Moshe Rabbeinu was recovering from bris milah on the third day of his bris milah in HaKodesh Baruch Hu. God himself came to visit Avram Avinu. And Avram Avinu suddenly excused himself from the Rabban Shalom and ran to greet three visitors who turned out to be angels. How do we collate that? The Ramchal Tlutzato tells us at the beginning of Derech Hashem that the ultimate purpose in life is to develop a relationship, an intimate relationship with God. So how does Avram Avinu pick himself up from a visit by the Rabban Shalom himself and go and be machnis aruch, bring guests into his house. Whole sugi in Gemara and Bava Metzi and Daf Pehvav. And the Gemara says, the rabbis tell us, from this episode, Gidola hachnosas orchim mehakbolas pnei ashchina. Bringing guests into your house, doing an act of love, an act of grace, an act of kindness to another Jew is greater than sitting with HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself. How do we understand that? Answer, there are two ways to read the Hebrew of that Chazal. Gidola hachnosas orchim mi hakbolas pnei It's comparative. It's contrasting. Greater is doing kindness than me, than being with God. But I always understood this Gemara differently. There's another way to read it. Gidola hachnosas orchim mi, if it derives from the greatest demonstration of loving God and developing an intimate relationship with God is to become godly yourself, to take his midos kaviyochol, mahu rachum afata rachum, mahu ahu afata ahu, imitate deyu, to imitate God, to be godly yourself. And the truth is, this was everything about Rabbi Tanzer. He somehow seamlessly merged from Avas Hashem to Avas Yisrael. He seamlessly moved from his love of God and Torah and learning Torah and living Torah to loving every single Jew and transmitting that message to thousands and generations of every Jew that he met. He was totally Rabbi Tanzer, non-confrontational. I saw it many times. Remember, I'm the outside observer. Totally non-confrontational. To a fault sometimes. Over the years before our lives converged, he brought many friends and colleagues out 
to Johannesburg to help him build Torah. And some of them decided to move on in an independent direction, away from Rabbi Tanzer's institution. And this could have been viewed critically. A lesser man, a lesser rabbi might have acted differently. But Rabbi Tanzer's response was to say it was non-confrontational is an understatement. He gave his bracha, his blessing. He encouraged them, he helped them. He kept in touch with them and encouraged everything they did. If you'll permit me a, a personal note, the two great moments in the life of a commun communal rabbi in terms of speaking are Shabbos Shuva and Shabbos Agodol. Those are his great, two great presentations. And here I was, a new friend of Rabbi Tanzer, and every year that we came for Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, he insisted that I deliver his Shabbos Shuva drasha. I do not know another rabbi on the planet, past, present, and probably even future, that would have been as insistent as he was that that should happen. The only time I had a machlokas with Rabbi Tanzer was every year when we went out to the restaurant to eat about who was going to pay the bill. And of course, he always won. Because he told me, I remember that last year I paid the bill. Now, we know Rabbi Tanzer's memory. It was the only time that he annually lied to me. But he got his way. The God of Israel sent three angels to visit the Jewish people to, through Avram Avinu. The God of Israel sent one angel to South Africa, to Johannesburg, together with his rabbits in Marsha, to inspire, to build, to plant the seeds of Torah, to transform a community into a makom Torah. He was an angel. And we pray that he will continue to be a Melitz Yosher, a guiding angel, protecting and comforting his dear Rebbets in Marsha, his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren, and the literally thousands who mourn his passing and feel bereft at the great loss that the community has endured. Tehei nishmas baruch, his memory should be for a blessing, and everyone who knew him should somehow attempt to take something that they remember from his great outstanding life, the life of a giant, the life of an angel, and apply it to their own lives. May his memory be for a blessing forever. Amen. Very nice. Okay.